All right, I'd like to call the April 9th meeting of the Dartmouth School Committee to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to remind everyone that this uh, meeting is being taped to air on DCTV, and I'd like to ask everyone to please um, silence their cell phones. Um, with that, we will kick off. Oh, we need a roll call, please. Sorry. Ms. Kent, can you do a roll Jenkins? call for us, please? Here. Mr. Nunes? Yep. Ms. Amaral? Here. Dr. Karafotis? Here. Mr. Oliver? Here. All right, so I will move to the first item on our agenda, which is the organization of the committee. Um, I will start with um, nominations for the office of the chair. That goes through Bonnie. I will start with nominations okay. for the office of <laughs> chair. <laughs> Do I hear a nomination for chair? I, like I would like. Uh, Ms. <laughs> Ms. Amaral? I would like to nominate uh, John Nunes. Okay, we have one for John Nunes. I will there second that. Second? Okay. <laughs> so I take it there are no other nominations. <laughs> Correct. Nobody's okay, nominations are closed. All in favor for Mr. Nunes as chair? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Nunes, are you accepting? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Okay. okay, there we go. We Thank declare you, Mr. Mr. Nunes. Nunes is now the chair of the school committee. So we get to, well, I guess we have to wait. Do you want to wait to do the switcheroo? Yeah, we'll do, until yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll switcheroo it. after the we'll next one. All. We'll do them all fine okay. after. That's fine. He takes okay. over now. Yes, he yeah, does. that's fine. would like to uh, open nominations for uh, vice chair of the uh, committee. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Ms. Kathleen Amaral. I will second I'll that. Second that. <laughs> we got a, so we've got a motion by Dr. Jenkins, and we have a tie for second by uh, Mr. Oliver and Dr. Karafotis. Ms. Amaral, do you accept? I do. Okay. Chair hearing any other nominations? All right, Chair hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Could see we get to move now, right? Now? Yeah, you All right, I guess you get so to take your, take your name tag. Take your name tag. I take your name tag. So. Uh, you can, you can put Right in there. Just this on too, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keystone How does it feel, Mr. News, to be back in the driver's seat? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like riding a bicycle. You never forget type of deal. It's always good, always good to be back. And I can't tell you how many times I've sat here, but each one is. Uh, enjoyable and a lot of fun and I look forward to uh, having the, the same type of uh, good dialogue and uh, camaraderie that we've always had and such. I thank Dr. Jenkins for an excellent year as uh, chair mm -hmm. and uh, we will uh, move on as we go forward. So with that being said we need a secretary to this wonderful committee. Mr. Chair, I nominate uh, Dr. Bonnie Gifford to serve as Secretary of the Dartmouth School Committee. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even going there. <laughs> she beat you, Chris. <laughs> so we have a motion by uh, Dr. Gifford and a second by no, Dr. Dr. Gifford. Dr. Jenkins and a second by Dr. Carafotis to uh, nominate uh, Dr. Bonnie Gifford, our superintendent, as uh, Secretary to the School Committee, as is customary so there is no discussion on that vote. No discussion. <laughs> I don't get to decline. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Very good. All right, Chief heard some comments. I already said what I was going to say. Uh, 
We need to uh, accept the minutes of the school committee meeting from March 26, 2018. Do we want to do the yep, committee thanks. assignments? No, I want to get. I'm Wait, going through my. First. I'm going through in my order. packet as I have them in autumn. Now. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to the committee. I got it. You know that's next. Okay. See? I'm good. <laughs> Boy. All right. So, the minutes of uh, the March 26, 2018 school committee minute meeting. Uh, motion approval. Second. <coughs> so we have a motion by Dr. Jenkins, and we have a second by Mr. Oliver. Run the motion. Any discussion? Chair hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Now, school committee assignments type of deal. You have in your packet uh, where everybody stood that we set up, uh, was set up last year in April of 2017 when we did the rotation and such. Uh, so I'm looking, uh, we'll go right down the list that we have. Uh, Dartmouth Educational Foundation is one person, and at the moment, Dr. Shannon Jenkins is uh, has that assignment. Would you like to stay there, I'll Dr. Jenkins? I'll stay on there, I'll do That's the fine. words for that, so that works out well. That works out perfectly, thank you very much. Uh, Southeastern Mass Educational Collaborative, SMEC. I would be more than happy to stay on that board, as I'm. I am currently the chair of that board, yeah, so, so I, just, I think it just makes I sense think for me to Mrs. stay on. I don't think uh, Mrs. Cooper would, uh, would would be good. So that's good. So you'll stay there. Mass Association of School Committees. Uh, I'll gladly stick with that, unless somebody else would like it. All right. Okay. Negotiation representative uh, for the superintendent. Uh, you have Dr. Jenkins and uh, Chris Oliver as the backup. Uh, I don't know if you want to do You want me to take that one? I'm good with that. That's up to you. What is, not your, much what is your contract up? That's it's good. not up. You're, that's not up, so. Just, um, Just renewed. Parts of it. I'll stay on that committee. Mm -hmm. since I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, open for uh, some discussion. Yeah. No, um, I, mean, I think we put me on there because I was chair. So do yeah. you, I think you yeah. should maybe. I'm good. That's fine. Do that. Yep, I can and, do that. And then do we want Kathleen to be the backup? I, that's, that's fine, fine with, with me. me. Okay. okay. Okay, school assignments that we all have to flip-flop around with now. Uh, Dartmouth High School at the moment is Dr. Kara Fotis. We usually switch these up every yeah, year. Yeah, that's what we do. I don't remember so what I've done and what I haven't done. I know, nor, nor have I, listen, nor have I over the years. So you've well, probably done every single school. Probably right? multiple <laughs> times. Multiple. Yeah. Right. So uh, I would be more than happy to take the high school. Take the high school. All right. Middle school is Mr. Oliver. Anybody interested? With that I'll one? I do, I'll do any. I don't really... No, I'm, nor here. am I. I'm, I'm, I'm open across the board as to wherever. Carol, preference. anyone you have preference? I was going to... Um, Go ahead. I was going to say, why don't I do the middle school? You want to do the middle school? That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. All right. The middle school is Mrs. Amaral. I can do that. You can do that one. All right. <laughs> uh, Quinn school was me. Um, I'm happy to. I mean, yeah, either of the two, but okay. I'm happy to take Quinn. All right, you can do that, and I'll take, and I will take uh, Potter. Perfect. Awesome. I'm Go ahead. Take it in. Huh? I'm just looking on your list. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, policy committee, uh, which works with mm -hmm. Mrs. Roy, is uh, Kathleen Amaral and Dr. Kara Fotis. I mean, I'm happy that's to stay. On. Good with that. Yeah, I'd like to switch. I think I've done that for a couple of years. You've done that a couple of three <laughs> years. Yeah. 
if anybody else would like to do that. It's an exciting committee. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I was looking at stay. I was, I was okay, at. I'll do it. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. We're good there. Uh, technology uh, committee with. Uh, Mr. Galishar is uh, at the moment, Dr. Karafotis and uh, Mr. Oliver. I'd like to stay on that. You want to stay there, Chris? I think it makes okay. sense for me to stay on. Mm -hmm. It does. Very good. Uh, Field and Facilities Committee with uh, Dr. Gifford is uh, myself and Ms. Amaral. That's good. I'm good with that. Uh, budget Subcommittee with... Uh, Mr. Kiley is uh, at the moment Dr. Karafotis and uh, Mr. Oliver, and I'm the backup. I can stay on that one or I can give it up. And I can join it or keep it however you want. However, guys. I can stay as the backup and. I'm okay. I'm not sure what my status is in the spring, so I think yeah, well, it's that's, best if someone yeah. else does that committee. Yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll stay on that. I'm fine with it. You're okay, beautiful. All right. Kathleen, you want to back them up or you want I'm me to sure back them up? Sure, if you, it's up. Oh, yeah. Those are big. I'm good for. Yeah. You can put me All in the right. backup. We'll put Kathleen as Mrs. Amaral as the backup. Okay. Everybody good? So we have uh, Dr. Jenkins on the Education Foundation. No. Mr. Oliver is on the SMEC. Oh, uh, I'll handle the uh, Mass Association of School Committees. Negotiation representative to the, with the superintendent is uh, myself <coughs> and uh, Ms. Amaral is the backup. Dartmouth High School on the school assignments, Dartmouth High School will be Mr. Oliver. The middle school will be Dr. Carafotis. DeMello will be Dr. Jenkins. Quinn will be Ms. Amaral and I'll have the Potter School. The policy uh, committee with uh, Ms. Roy will be uh, Ms. Amaral and Dr. Jenkins. The Technology Committee with Dr. Uh, Mr. Galishaw will be Dr. Karafotis and Mr. Oliver. Fields and Facilities Committee with the Superintendent will be myself and uh, Ms. Amaral. And the Budget uh, Committee with uh, Mr. Kiley will be uh, Dr. Karafotis and Mr. Oliver and Ms. Amaral will back up, back them up if there's one that can't make a meeting. Is that what we came up with? Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Public comment. We've allocated uh, 10 minutes on uh, tonight's agenda. If uh, anybody has anything to talk about as to what is on the uh, agenda, I ask you to come forward and state your name and what your comment is. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the minutes were there. I missed it. Sorry about that. You were correct, Miss Dr. That's Jenkins. Right. I, You're the boss now. You I can do whatever I didn't, you like. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't read down far like. enough. I'm sorry. I had read this, but it was uh, <coughs> further down. I didn't have them set up right in my uh, way. I printed them out. My fault. I will do that. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, new business. Superintendent's update. Okay, we've got a few things to talk about. Um, we, I believe, as far as I understand, I was at a conference today, but the um, middle school had their Alice practice with the staff today. As you know, the high school has already run one, so we're moving right along with that. We've met with the elementary principals twice uh, to determine what lessons and the uh, students would be receiving relative to school safety. Um, so they've sent letters home to the parents, uh, letting them know that this will be happening and um, that students will start to receive some um, information via some uh, books that we bought and resources through the Alice program. The Lion King was superb. I hope some of you had a chance to see it this past week. But the kids never uh, ceased to amaze me, of course. Uh, the percussion, uh, show Saturday night was as equally wonderful and uh, we also have had this week well, actually last week two presentations at the high school <coughs> by Corey Palazzi um, a young man who was um, struck down if you will uh, became a paraplegic with uh, because of substance abuse and uh, that show will also be tomorrow night at the high school at 6 30 6 o'clock 6 o'clock tomorrow night it will be uh, preceded by a, a film um, about the opioid uh, problem, et cetera, and um, I've seen both, and it's a very powerful moment. So 
if anybody gets a chance to stop by at the high school to see that. And um, we've been doing some work, as you know, with the mass grant that we got last year. A lot of the equipment has been received. Uh, we're looking now to uh, renovate the lab B2, which is the conference room off the middle uh, library. So we've uh, had some meetings with the uh, high school admin uh, with a visiting scholar from MIT that came to kind of give us uh, some ideas about how to really move on this innovation lab, kind of the things we might want to do. And I know that Mr. Tebow and some other folks are also visiting some schools coming up soon because we, you know, we just want some ideas on what might make a good space there. So we have lots of equipment. We just want to do it upright. Uh, so some of that work will be done this summer, some of those renovations. We attended, a number of us attended Highlander. As you recall, we've been partnering with Highlander Consulting Group for Personalized and Blended Learning. So we attended a leading, and, leading change and innovation conference last week to try to come up with some more <coughs> ideas of how to keep going forward with innovation. And I don't want to miss anything on my list. Um, I also just wanted to report that I've recently uh, was just elected to the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents Executive Board. Oh. So I'm happy about that. That will start in September, um, those meetings. So that will be, yeah, thank you. So that will be, uh, you know, being able to really get information from the state level, right. et cetera, to bring back. So um, that's it for tonight. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions, comments? No, I, Dr. Have, I have a question about the imp implementation of the Highland program. Mm -hmm. What have we seen this year mm -hmm. uh, put into place? Because there's a lot going on. Oh, with that. there sure is. Yeah. With the Highlander group, that's that's right. what you're asking me. Yes. So uh, a couple of things that have happened. The high school has worked with the consultant uh, a little bit with the lead teachers to talk about how to be coaching in the classroom and. Uh, helping people really become good innovators in their classroom and personalized learning and blended learning. And they've also uh, gotten some help developing those pathways that Mr. Tebow talked about when he talked about the changes in the, the uh, course mm -hmm. sequences, the uh, computer science, the robotics engineering, the biotech, et cetera. But uh, also at the middle school, cohorts of teachers met with the consultant, his name's Mike, um, and did a lot of lesson study and then went in and observed. They've been observing each other in the classrooms and taking, coming back, a regular lesson study, seeing what they telling, talking about what they've seen. And um, the beauty of that is the capacity, the teacher's capacity for delivering personalized and blended learning lessons and really shaking up what they're doing in the classroom mm -hmm. has really grown where they've now, this cohort of teachers have delivered professional development to their colleagues. Mm -hmm. And um, talking with the admin, and we've been over and, and seen some of the work they've done. Uh, the, the teachers are very, very happy with it. So we're hoping to continue that, at least that piece of work, and maybe extend that work also to the high school. Because um, we think, you know, again, the, the beauty of the discussion, learning, the teachers learning together, then watching each other teach, and then coming back has really been powerful. That's great. So we're pretty pleased with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, one of the other things we have under new business is uh, an approval for uh, the uh, mm -hmm. destination imagination to uh, go down to uh, Knoxville, Tennessee for uh, their global finals, and that's going to be uh, in May type of deal. We've got all the information on in the packet. Dr. Gifford, anything? We have Mr. Ruta here, who is the chair mm -hmm. or the, if, the team, manager. team manager, if okay. you'd like to come up and Please. talk about that. Just identify yourself, please. Sure. Thank you. So, good evening. Um, my name is Linda Ruda, and I'm the team manager for the Dartmouth Middle School Destination Imagination Team. We are a vegan. The children on the team are sixth grade student Tegan Witzik, seventh grade student Madden Waskowitz, seventh grade student Ryan Duggan, and seventh grade student my son Ryan Aruda. Um, for those who may not be familiar with Destina Destination Imagination, um, it is a project based learning program designed to complement K through 12 education. Each year, seven new academic challenges in the fields of STEM, fine arts, service learning, and early learning are offered. In solving a challenge, ch children learn the creative process from imagination to innovation and the skills needed to thrive in school, their careers, and beyond. The team chose the improv challenge and have worked together weekly at my home since October to compete at the, re at the regional level. 
On March 10th, the team competed at Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School where they placed first in their level, advancing them to compete at the state level. On March 24th, they competed at Worcester Polytechnic Institute where they faced six other teams from around Massachusetts. They were beyond excited when they placed second at their level. In addition to receiving a medal and trophy, their second place standing advanced them to global finals. Global finals are held in Knoxville, Tennessee and include teams from 45 states as well as 14 countries from around the world. The event is being held from May 22nd through May 27th. In an effort to fund this trip, we have asked local restaurants um, if they would be willing to help. A few have offered their support by giving a portion of their sales during a given night. I'm here tonight to respectfully ask the school committee to support these fundraising efforts. I ask if the support is given that we can get flyers home um, through school or even through the electronic backpack. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Can you make sure that we have a list? I mean, you know, anytime I don't have to cook at home, it's wonderful. Yeah. Sure, you yeah. Know, my, um, my, fam my famous meal is 1-800-RESERVATIONS. <laughs> Excellent. I call early for preferred seating, so. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, Casey DeMello, who is the coordinator for the town, she has um, emailed. We so far have two nights. Um, one of them is the Cask and Pig, and that is on um, Monday, April 23rd. And the other one so far is uh, Phase, mm -hmm. and that is... Um, let's see, on May 3rd from uh, 11.30 to closing. We also are in the process of um, asking Not Your Average Joes. They just need um, something from the school department saying that we're not profit. And so um, I believe it's for the whole month of May that they will, um, every Monday in that month, they will give a portion of their sales towards the team. Excellent. Great, that's excellent. Yeah, and how would I go about, like, if I send it to, um, Okay. Yeah. We get them before Friday each week. Okay. Send them. We'll send them to our office. And okay, we'll great. To go okay, excellent. I can you can that. just email it. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, great. We can, Thank we you. can get those dates for the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. restaurants yep. and everything yep. up on the website, yep. too. And then we, we put it on our yeah. Facebook yeah. and everything. Oh, so as long as we have it, we'll do it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. well, and we'll sure put them on right. the website. So yeah. they go in the electronic backpack and they go on the website and they can want Excellent. Yeah, because a lot Yeah, a lot of the restaurants now are allowing... Um, in addition to the flyer, just the mobile device, which is great because, you know, yep. yeah. most people don't have, like, the, you know, the paper with them. So exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. That'll be great. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you for doing it. Yep, no <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Best of luck for the yeah. team. What, one quick question. Go ahead, Dr. Carroll. I just wanted to thank you and all the work you're doing mm -hmm. with this team. I know there was a period where we didn't think that was going to, you know, people <clears> were dropping <throat> out of it. And um, it's, it's wonderful to have it back. And the work that you're doing on mm. it. Is the middle school the only level that's um, doing destination and recognition? No, we, we had um, competing um, at the regional level. We had a couple of teams from the elementary level. Mm -hmm. um, we're the only team from the middle school level, and I don't believe there was a team at the high school level. But there were Did a few you? kids from, um, there were a few teams from the elementary level. Great. Well, thank you. Wonderful. You're welcome. Yeah, that's good. What, what are they working on? I guess. Okay. <laughs> so the um, the challenge that they chose was the improv challenge, and so what the kids had to do was they were given a list of um, either real explorers or fictional explorers, and they had to choose amongst themselves five different explorers. And in addition to that, they also had to um, come up with a list of five treasures, national treasures. And so um, the day of the competition, they go in like having the research on those particular explorers or treasures. But um, at before their presentation, which they have two minutes to prepare for their skit, they um, you know, they basically draw names out of a hat. So they are given <coughs> two of the um, explorers that they researched, as well as one of the treasures. And then um, in addition to that, they were given a an unusual place. So they have that two minutes to pre prepare for that. Um, during their five minute presentation time, um, they also have to go to a set place and grab a setback. And so they have to then incorporate that into their um, skit. So it takes, like, so, and in, in addition to that too, they also have a prop, which is a white bed sheet, and they can use that with their skit. Um, so they've been practicing just, first of all, um, developing a beginning, middle, end, but it, with this particular challenge, um, they can't really fully prepare because um, they don't know what the setback will be or um, 
what the unusual place is. Like for example, during their state challenge, they, um, their setback was like their, the elevator stopped working and their in, unusual place was um, in the middle of a tree. Mm -hmm. So they had to incorporate all of these skills and they really did a great job with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see just that creativity, you yeah. know, that thinking outside the box. Yes. And think on their feet. And exactly. Oh, and like I love the that. teamwork together. Mm -hmm. Really a lot of yeah, skills, just presentation in front of lots of people. Mm -hmm. It's a great program. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. No, so. it's great. Thank Chair you. will entertain a motion to approve the uh, destination imagination excursion to uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and also their fundraising requests that have been brought to us. So moved. Moved by Mr. Oliver, second by Dr. Karafotis. On the motion, any discussion? Chair hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that being said, anybody have anything before I do my spiel here? Type of, anybody have anything they wish to bring up? Nope. No? Okay, good. Just a couple of things. Uh, during school vacation week, I know uh, our DECA students are going to be heading, I believe, or right after vacation, they're going to be heading to Atlanta, Georgia mm -hmm. for uh, their national final. so wish them good luck. Uh, this Friday night, if you haven't had an opportunity to see our percussion perform, is going to be a night of percussion at the high school. It's start at 7 o'clock in the auditorium with the, the different ensembles and students, and then uh, we'll move over to the gym, and they'll do their... Uh, uh, routine their uh, show and that uh, our color guard leaves uh, tomorrow night for uh, WGI finals in uh, Dayton Ohio over the weekend uh, the percussion leaves next Wednesday morning for Dayton for their their percussion finals and finally uh, just a congratulations uh, the Standard Times has been posting all the winter all-stars for the winter sports so congratulations to all of our students that have uh, been nominated or mentioned. Appreciate them all. So, mm -hmm. that being said, anything else for anybody? No. Yeah. All right. Our next meeting, I believe, is 30th. April 30th at 6 30 at the Quinn Elementary School. Uh, we are going to adjourn this meeting until 6 30 when we're going to be meeting with the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee in a joint meeting in the uh, Selectman's meeting room, the John Marlin meeting room. So uh, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, adjourn this meeting to uh, the Selectman's meeting room at 6.30. So moved. Second. Moved by Dr. Jenkins, second by Dr. Karafotis. On the motion, any discussion? Chair hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you and good evening. We'll see you at the Selectman's meeting live at 6.30. Joint meeting with the school committee and finance committee. It's been a long time since we met, 364 days ago. <laughs> since we now have that firmly established that it wasn't on a yearly <laughs> anniversary as of today. Uh, as a recollection to our uh, listeners at home, um, just go around the table, introduce ourselves, because we do have some people here that people may not be familiar with. Um, we'll start off with Mr. Kiley. James Kiley, the Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations for the School Department. Bonnie Gifford, Superintendent of the School Department. John Nunes, Chairman of the Diamond School Committee. Shannon Jenkins, School Committee Member. Kathleen Amaral, uh, Vice Chair of the School Committee. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carol Carafoda, School Committee Member. Chris Oliver, School Committee Member. Greg Barnes, uh, Finance Director and Co-Interim Town, uh, Town Administrator. <coughs> John Heron, Selectman. Sean McDonald, Chairman. Frank Gracie, Selectman. Stanley Mickelson, Co-Chairman. Vice Chair. Vice, Vice Chair. Chair. Uh, Dave Tattlebaum, Dave Tattlebaum, I just moved over, and Ellen, proud to be a new member. Welcome. And thank you, and I would just like to say one thing, if I may. Um, <clears throat> let's thank my wife, family, but most importantly, my father, 
He's a longtime resident, and I want to dedicate this meeting and my work going forward to him because uh, I'm proud to serve in uh, his memory. Thank you. Uh, Mike Pru, Finance Committee member. Uh, Lou Garibaldi, Finance Committee member. Uh, Doug Roscoe, Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. Gloria Bancroft, Finance Committee member. Terry Hamm, Finance Committee member. Okay. I'm sitting way over on the, on the dais over there is Deborah Molino Enna. She is our other co uh, town administrator. All right. Hi. All right. Here we are again. <coughs> we have uh, looking at the financial picture of the town, also looking at financial policies, capital improvement plan, and also uh, projections and budgets for the four. Uh, FY19, um, and I believe what we're going to be doing is I'm going to let Greg uh, start off um, since he is the uh, finance director and it would be more appropriate for him to start speaking on this and then we can go from, we'll see where we can go from there. Greg? Okay, uh, first uh, it's important that uh, uh, we, well, we plan to meet before the, this meeting, um, or I should say before the agenda was finalized for this meeting. Uh, due to quorum, we weren't able to, and, and getting department heads, we weren't able to meet for the capital until Friday. Uh, but we did uh, meet on Friday for several hours and were able to get through uh, the budget. Uh, so I'm going to be adding some of what was uh, uh, voted on Friday and that is incorporated into the documents uh, the handout documents so just be <coughs> aware uh, that that is a change from when you receive the documents on Thursday uh, so let me uh, start off with the financial projections um, I'll let most of it speak for itself uh, we currently uh, have a uh, deficit we need to uh, 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 bridge the gap on um, the uh, several themes I think that are important to talk about uh, first of all um, the amount of deficit which is a hundred and six nine one six and keep in mind that's up by uh, uh, a little because on Friday I learned of uh, uh, DPW needs 7,500 for a uh, 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 study for a dam, uh, or I should say a, 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 a exam of a dam. And then also there was something involving EMA. So that slightly changed the number from the documents you had in the packet. But the 106,916, uh, to get to that number, the budget was tightened and by that what I'm saying is we <coughs> increased our revenue assumptions and we uh, tightened our expenditure side of the budget uh, we can do that because we're within our financial policies however we can't continue to do that year after year after year uh, what has happened is every year, which is quite common, our budget goes up on the expenditure side, and every year our budget goes up on the revenue side. Certainly that's uh, been the case during my tenure here. However, the growth of expenditures is uh, now greater than the growth of revenue. Hence a tightening uh, that will, over time, have an impact on our free cash, which is the basis of our capital plan. So just be aware of that. Um, why is that occurring? Our local receipts have plateaued, um, have um, actually decreased. Uh, they were a little less last year from the year before. Our new growth um, uh, it went down last year. Um, uh, as a percent of a b the budget, it is uh, less than it was 10 years <coughs> ago. Um, last year, off the top of my head, I think we had commercial industrial new growth of about $57,000. Out of 820000 in new growth, <coughs> the majority of that came from uh, 
personal property, which is uh, most of that's utilities like Verizon and Eversource. Uh, that's very hard to predict. Uh, about 350 came from that. And the rest came from residential, which has been increasing uh, over the last uh, few years. Uh, well, I expect that uh, commercial may go up, not so much this year, but next year there has been uh, some in uh, commercial growth, particularly in the Reed Road area. <coughs> um, uh, I, I, at the same time, am quite concerned about the personal property side of things. Um, so uh, it will be interesting to see where new growth goes. Uh, but one thing that has affected us greatly is we no longer have the uh, Hawthorns and the, and the giant solar farms being added to the tax rolls. Uh, we are expected to get one solar farm, but it is a smaller one. Um, and we have not seen any significant medical growth in quite a number of years. Uh, to put that in perspective, a Hawthorne can easily be, their addition, I believe, was at least a half a million. Uh, the Hanush Plaza was 47,000. So it takes a lot of small plazas to equal one hospital. Um, the other trend <coughs> is state aid. Uh, state aid has gone up a little, but it, it certainly after factoring in inflation, it's still less than it was uh, back uh, before the, the, the Great Recession. Um, so again, um, I am not claiming that we're, our revenues are declining. What I am saying, though, is the rate of growth is, is decreasing, and um, that creates issues should the town um, not moderate its expense growth. And again, I want to stress for this year, um, we have the fiscal flexibility to take steps, uh, but for the long term, we're going to have to uh, plan out um, for this. One very um, uncertain factor I should note in the whole new growth picture is and beyond that in the, how it's set up is the issue of marijuana. Uh, we don't know what that will uh, bring to the town. However, I want to stress if Springfield or Everett planned on gambling four or five years ago, um, God help them, they're still, I, I understand Springfield will be opening up and Everett um, <coughs> next year after that. But my point is, you can't count on what you truly don't know. Uh, so we're not trying to predict. Uh, that's a very uh, variable um, uh, factor. Um, and uh, it could be positive to the town's uh, finances, but I do not have that factored into these assumptions. Um, so does anyone have any uh, follow-up questions on the projections? Uh, no? Anybody? No. I just had a question regarding the roof. Um, estimate is not included in this, correct? I'm sorry, what did you say? The roof. The roof. The roof. Oh. Um, well, that's under capital, but, that's uh, not but I could uh, cover that now if you'd like me. So we'll hold off on that for a okay. John, John, just I've got a quick question. I don't know if any of my colleagues do, but now this is the governor's. This is House One on the state side. So, have you heard anything of what ways and means or the Senate are talking about doing? I mean, I one, I have not. I guess, uh, you know, could the hundred and six thousand go away with what the state's doing? Honestly, I have there? not. Um, you know, my hope is obviously there'll be a little more aid to help fill in the gap we have here. Uh, but I have, I do not have up-to-date info on uh, what what might be uh, proposed above and beyond uh, the uh, House one. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I should state uh, one one very very important note to uh, point out within this projection. 
there is an amount that has been set aside for contractual obligations. However, uh, none of the unions on the school side, I'm sorry, town side, uh, correct me, the school side <laughs> is settled. None of the unions on the town side uh, are settled. So um, that's a big uncertainty factor. We did try to budget for something, uh, but again, uh, we really won't know the actual figure until uh, uh, contracts are settled. My board? Yeah. Anybody? Mr. Talbot? Thank you. Um, in regard to health care, and uh, you made it clear to us for the longest time that it's, it's going to be exponential going forward, uh, which is bad enough, but when you consider what our employees are paying and teachers are paying percentage contributions, it's um, is there anything we can do uh, to see what's out there in terms of uh, comparative programs or choice that we could make uh, as we go forward? And I know it's a difficult subject, but uh, uh, can we be ahead of this at all in some form? Uh, we uh, basically communities do one of two things. They're either self-insured or they're part of a health collaborative. Uh, we used to be self-insured. Uh, we joined uh, the largest uh, health collaborative in the state, um, municipal health collaborative. I should state another option is kind of like a collaborative is called GIC, Group Insurance Commission. Um, based on a, a, a review of the collaboratives serving this area, I do not believe that any of the alternatives would be competitive to what we currently have. Um, um, in terms of self-insurance, we went from self-insurance to get better rates, particularly in the area of the administration. Uh, Maya, being so large, is the third largest customer for Mass. I'm sorry, Blue Cross <coughs> Healthcare, and that gives them a lot of leverage. And through that, they're able to get a lower administrative rate uh, than we would if we were self-insured. Even when you're self-insured, you do go through a health network. And uh, so um, the only other alternative is GIC. Uh, GIC, uh, Group Insurance Commission, that's the state plan. They do allow municipalities into that. However, the plan design is very different from what we have. <clears throat> Additionally, it is dominated by Boston area uh, municipalities. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, the premiums are pulled. In other words, the, pre the same premium for everyone. Uh, so if someone was paying uh, additional being in the Boston area, uh, we would be um, paying that as well. Uh, but really, as I see it, um, uh, GIC would be our only uh, um, real viable alternative to Maya, which I believe to be competitive. Uh, it did go up quite significantly this year. It went up 8.15%. Additionally, uh, we were uh, running down our reserves that we no longer needed when we uh, went into a health collaborative. So when you include that, that's 4%, but each year 4% it, it, is a greater amount. So the effective increase was 12.66%. Uh, so what we've done is we've been working with the employees to offer a high deductible plan uh, at a higher contribution rate of 60-40. Um, we've had um, some of the unions indicate um, interest in pursuing that as an option only. I want to stress that term, as an option only. Um, that with the 60-40 rate would be 30 per, about 30% savings from the <coughs> alternative um, uh, regular plan in the, the premium. We are also looking at the regular plan as to what we might do 
to that in the future. Uh, those conversations will no doubt be far more uh, involved because they do um, involve plan design for possible changes in contribution rates. We have a very generous health plan in terms of its plan design. Um, uh, while some may be open to looking at uh, a less generous plan, uh, it's probably safe to say that there will be considerable opposition to that. Um, which we would also need to look at if we went into GIC. So, no easy answers, Dave. Hey, Jim, um, in the short term, I've been in office, which is uh, days. Uh, I've been. <laughs> Feels like years already. Yes, yeah, well, I've been approached about on this subject more than anything else. Um, and I'm, maybe this is speaking uh, too early, too soon. But is there any advantage to pooling um, representatives from maybe the schools and our different departments that could be? examine these alternatives in some form, either now or down the road, that would be helpful, uh, and then they go back and pool to their, because uh, there's a lot of choices, be it the high deductibles or whatever. Uh, is that something that's viable at all? Well, we're, we have an IEC, Insurance Advisory Committee, and I can honestly say, and I hope he's shaking his head back and forth, I work very, very <coughs> closely with Jim on this subject. Um, the majority of our health care uh, provided is to the school. Right. Uh, yeah, the teachers alone are something like 55%. So uh, the, the town um, is a small component to the overall uh, whole. Uh, Jim and I over the years have looked at many options. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's not, um, how could I say it? Um, if you look at what we've done in the last five, six years, uh, along with Dave Cressman, you will <coughs> see that we've made quite a number of changes. Great. And the frustration that comes with that is you make a change, it, things look good, only until the next year when uh, rates and such go up. One of our um, largest challenges, and this is uh, to do with municipalities, is we offer by law uh, retiree subsidized health insurance. Uh, the catch with that, however, <coughs> is many of our employees, not, not the majority, but quite a number, retire early, before 65, and their claims get pulled in with the actives. And uh, this is not meant to say there aren't exceptions, but there is an uh, a very high correlation between uh, age and health care utilization. So one of the challenges of, um, uh, of this town, um, virtually every community in the state, is the fact that um, over time our pool has gotten older and with that comes higher claims experience and higher claims experience is the number one determinant of our rates. Mm -hmm. um, I want to stress we are not, um, um, we recognize this to be a major issue with the employees <coughs> as I've said in the IEC um, uh, I expect this will be a dominant issue in the upcoming negotiations. Um, uh, I too share the <coughs> goal of trying to mitigate cost, uh, but no easy answers. Um, most of what could be done uh, needs to be addressed at a national um, state level, right. and I do not have control over that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Now that we set the stage for such a doom and gloom. Upbeat <laughs> meeting. Doom and gloom. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, oh, we all knew yeah. we all know that eventually this was coming down oh, yeah. the line. And everybody here recognizes that expenses have always been 
more than what revenue has always been. And we all know that government is, <coughs> is really run by people and that the majority of our <laughs> expense is personnel. And you know, we know that the school department is somewhere around 75 to 80% personnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Town department is basically the, almost that same same figure. So limited limited amount of money that we can collect. Um, so we have to we have to make some you know decisions down the line, and hopefully you know couch it so that everybody understands it and that all the uh, you know all our personnel you know, recognize the fact that you know. This is what we have to deal with. So, moving on, the operating budget for <coughs> the upcoming year to be determined. But here's a, I guess the so far a, a department request budget. We you know, looking at the zeros under the <coughs> POM recommendations, we're assuming that the finance committee will be beginning shortly on uh, looking at the, the requests and coming up with that. So uh, the majority of hearings for the budgets have been already held and uh, typically um, uh, they start their votes uh, right around this time. So. so what we are looking at department request wise is a total of $86,524,469 or a difference between 3.95% uh, from last year. Mm. So that's 3.2, 3 almost $3.3 .3 million um, that has to be uh, looked at in, in the difference. So. Uh, I, I do want to put a positive note on that. Uh, that number is inflated by debt service, um, <coughs> and uh, the uh, biggest component being the exclusion, uh, the debt exclusion for the uh, uh, police department uh, did result in an increase in the expenditure side. Now. Um, <coughs> Perhaps not good for the uh, taxpayer, but from a budgetary standpoint, that's balanced out on the revenue side. So if you take that out, uh, the increase is about 2.9, 2.8, uh, 2.9 percent. So that is inflated again by the the debt service. Um. I'd give it. Do you have any? Uh, you comments? want me to quickly? Go ahead, Mr. Nunes. You've got, <coughs> unless I'm missing something, on the revenue side, you've got debt exclusion of uh, 1.4, and then you've got on the uh, expense side, you've got uh, almost 2.5. Yes, uh, we get uh, on for each year. Um, if you look under, um, <laughs> if you look under the revenues, you'll see SBA reimbursement mm -hmm. down toward the end there. Oh, okay, all right. <coughs> okay, let me see. What you're, okay. So the SBA kind of reimbursement yeah. is for the high for school. The high school. Yep. We're still getting one point. One million seven hundred fifty thousand a year for the high school from the, uh, the school uh, okay. the SPA. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Gifford, you want to uh, speak on the um, the school department budget, please? Um, I'm going to let Mr. Kiley talk about the financial piece first. I know he's been working with Mr. Barnes quite a bit on this, and then I can certainly um, talk about any of the programs or requests that we have. Thank you. So we've um, had a very involved process um, to date. We started 
with uh, meeting with all of our building principals and, uh, and, and directors and built a budget um, that was is primarily a level service budget. Um, we've tried to focus on reallocating <coughs> resources this year because we know it's you know, limited amount of resources and I appreciate all the help that um, you know Mr. Barnes has been through the process um, to try and keep me informed of where the town is overall. We've proposed a 2.8 percent budget, so pretty consistent with what um, <coughs> Mr. Barnes was just talking about with the overall budget, um, an increase of about 1.1 million dollars. Um, we've proposed a few new things and part of that reallocation of resources is some staffing in and out to provide a new therapeutic program uh, for students in grades two through five something that would address uh, one of our priorities which is social and emotional um, health and, and development of students so it's been an identified need in our strategic plan and we're continuing to work on that so uh, but we're from that part of that project, we, we um, are expecting some savings for bringing some students back who are currently outplaced, and we're also reallocating some other resources to um, to fund that program. That's that's really sort of the centerpiece of what we're trying to do. And outside of that, we're really looking at a um, fairly level service type budget. What? Um because I know when I was on the school committee, one of the biggest elephants in the room was the SPED budget. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that translating this year as compared to last year? Well, so one of the things that we're trying to address. <laughs> okay, I already got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it, it's it's an ongoing you know right. it's an ongoing battle and. and um, Overall, if you look at our, our special ed spending through the years, at least through, through the recent years, certainly my time here, I think, was, I think this is the eighth budget that I've been working on here, um, it's increased at a higher rate than the rest of the budget, um, sort of like health insurance, right? right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's um, a lot of mandated costs <clears throat> and things that we have to do for kids. And one of the things that we've tried to do is uh, be creative and mm -hmm. look at a program like this that we're talking about this therapeutic program as a potential way to both bring students back who are currently outplaced that we can't currently service and also provide resources for kids that are currently in the district that um, you know we may be able to address their needs in a better way and keep them in district and hopefully in in integrated without you know throughout the school um, as opposed to having to be on a van uh, and shipped off to another uh, another building somewhere out of town so that's the way we're trying to we're trying to look at this um, it, it's an ongoing ongoing issue though for sure would, would it be safe to say that doing a special needs program in-house versus out when you send a student out you're you basically you're taking um, let's just say let's just say an amount just say one percent that increases to one and a half to two percent because you're 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 outsourcing uh, the student to a to another facility so basically what you could be doing in-house almost uh, you're spending more at least half more or double than what you normally do is that safe it, to say it, it, could. it can be very expensive to send students mm -hmm. out I mean it could be anywhere from fifty thousand dollars to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars just in tuition to send a student out um, then of course you're providing transportation as mm -hmm. well out of the district and I mean most importantly the student themselves um, if we have an opportunity to educate the student in town where their their family has an easier opportunity to participate in the educational process and if we can meet those needs um, in district we want to be able to do that it's not easy to do that though you have to build capacity, capacity. Um, and, and that's something that doesn't come inexpensively either so you need the right staff and you need the support to build those programs so you need typically um, consultants that work in this type of field and this is a very specialized field um, brain-based therapy programming so 
Yes, we will save money is the answer um, if if we keep students in district. But it, more more importantly for us, it's better for the kids. Um, which gets to another point, which is um, out of town. I'm not talking school choice. I'm talking state placed families. Um, how is that affecting the McKinley? It's McKinley. McKinley, McKinley. 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 Okay, thank you. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I know it was some dead president in the fields, but um, <laughs> what? How is that affecting the district? And I probably know the answer: Is the state living up to its reimbursement? <laughs> it, it's um, the state doesn't doesn't fund it. You know, the state doesn't fund McKinney Vento entirely. Um, it's an impact for us, and the and one of the there's a number of impacts is the educational impact of okay we've got to drop everything and figure out what's going you know how we can best educate the student who just moved in yesterday mm -hmm. um, to a hotel um, so the governor has actually <clears throat> he had begun to decrease some of that um, some of the placements in Dartmouth but we're seeing it now An tick increase. up again mm -hmm. uh, so we are getting more students again and it's and it's it's we have some money built into the budget for mm -hmm. it, and it's just you never know what you you never know what you're going to get um, in terms of you know these needy kids, and um, they tend to be fairly needy when they're in these situations. So um, it may not be that you know we can just educate, just sit them in a seat in a classroom, and that's all they're going to need. Um, you know, it can be more involved than that, obviously. Right. It's pretty much impossible to plan for. So yeah. we just do the best we can and reallocate resources when we have to to make it happen. Um, I just want to make the, um, the point that Mr. Kiley brought up about the um, brain based therapy program that we're developing. Um, as you know or don't know, the trauma impact that kids have these days, the uh, needs that they have, social emotional has just increased. We're seeing earlier and earlier students coming in with uh, lots of issues like that. So we really uh, believe 100% in this program, as well as the other uh, folks that we've added to our budget, including the uh, BCBA, which we're looking to fund out of our school choice uh, money, which would be a district-wide position. And that, that position helps across the district uh, looking at behaviors uh, that are manifesting from these kinds of trauma situations etc providing support for all of the classrooms um, so you'll see in our uh, request that really our focus is on those um, uh, that level of need that we're trying to not only service our kids better but as mr. Kiley mentioned um, keep them in district where they really belong and then in the long term, look for a financial reward for the, for the district. So um, that's our focus. That's our focus. John, any members from your board? Uh, well, I wanted to raise a, uh, an issue that we talked about related to the school budget, but not the school budget. This is related to the Greater New Bedford Vocational Technical uh, Allocation. We had a long conversation about that. We had the superintendent and the principal from Voc Tech come in and, and meet with the finance mm -hmm. committee and talk with us. And I think there were a few concerns that we raised. One is the, you know, the amount that they spend. <laughs> you know, it's a big budget. They spend one and a half times as much per pupil as Dartmouth does, uh, and quite a bit more even than the state average. And and I understand a, a vocational, you know, technical. Uh, education is going to be a little bit more expensive in terms of equipment and such but across the categories they spend more they spend two and a half times as much as Dartmouth mm -hmm. on administration even setting aside the information systems problem but you know they spend one and a half times on pupil services all the way down through all the line items so there's a lot of spending there that's not you know machinery and equipment um, so that's part of it and the other issue that we see is the volatility in that number because it's based on enrollment you know we sent a few to you know a dozen more kids from from our town and our, our, our allocation goes up, and that's a hard thing to budget for and plan for. So it went up almost 9% this year. That's you know almost $350,000. That's a huge bump. Um, so that's another issue we see, and I know I realize that all of this is formula-based and it's, it's mm -hmm. based on statute, 
Um, but as a town, we also are in a position to allocate for a formula that we think works better for us. I know there's been litigation about this, but the formula is also set by law, so the law can be changed. And, and I wonder whether there's anything that, you know, I don't have an answer, I just raise it as an issue that I think we maybe ought to think about. Well, I think we have discussed this at, I remember it was prior before you came along when I think uh, Attorney Michaud was on the board. I think we were talking about that also at the same time. Yeah. And, yeah, the agreement <coughs> between New Bedford for Haven and Dartmouth is greatly um, to the New Bedford advantage. Um, and uh, I don't know how Dartmouth and Fairhaven can leverage any kind of, uh, I guess, positioning a, 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 to, to change the formula. Um, I know it has to be done at the state level and it has to um, be done via the legislature. So you know, maybe contacting um, uh, Representative Markey to at least to kind of bend his ear on it, like see where we can go with it would be probably an appropriate uh, avenue, at least to start. So I just want to follow up on that because I was doing some math while we were talking about school stuff. And I mean, I think people like to think, oh, there's plenty of money in the town and we've got sock drawers with money hidden. But I mean, so much of these deficits are driven by things that are out of our control, right? And so for fiscal year 20, if you look at the increases projected in Vogue and Bristol Aggie, that's 95% of our projected deficit, right? And we, we don't control that. We have no control over that. Um, you know, it's it's maybe a little less, but it's you know, three hundred fifty, three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. When you're looking at a five hundred thousand dollar deficit, that's stuff like we can. There's only so much that we can do here. Healthcare, or the town of Dartmouth isn't going to fix that, right? These statutory considerations, right? And so that's I think sometimes it's important to articulate that for people who are watching at home. That while we can do the best to sort of try to make things work here, a lot of these things are out of control. Out of, of the town, right? And we can't, we can't, we can talk to people, but those people control those sorts of things that are really driving our budget. Well, at least on the uh, on the Bristol County side, I mean, a little more clarity and a little more openness, you know, from you know the, the Bristol County com commissioners to the to its members is tantamount. Um, as we can see, when it came time to do the uh, vote on the uh, the works there, it's like everybody was out and you know. Nobody knew what was going on. Even 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 our own representative was having a hard time getting the information. Right. You know, and that's part of you know that's part of the problem that I have with Bristol County. You they know, and always meeting. had with Bristol County. They have a meeting of Saturday after a blizzard. Yeah, yeah. and then they raise uh, the yeah. fifty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. So the, the that and uh, I mean, let me ask a question. Just uh, just a selectman Heron, when they were discussing the. Um, the renovations to the schools were they also talking about increasing the capacity yes mm -hmm. all right so there you go so there's a possibility where you're going to end up having more students we know that not everybody in bristol county uh, sends students there but if this is a bristol county school then it should be shared among the bristol county members even if you don't send anybody there it's still you you have the opportunity to send there at least there's going to be some type of a uh call it an initiation fee or or a or membership fee that, that you have to belong to whether it's based on your population or based upon whatever and then it could be if you send a student this is the cost so that's something that has to be addressed um, and either that or just the school has to be taken over by the state and then Bristol County just disappears period so when we were talking with uh, with the vote folks, the concern that I think all of us had was that we have zero say in their budget. I and mean, if we have an issue with the school department, we talk to you guys, we you know, work out a budget, everything. Else. We have no say at all when it comes to vote. They send us a bill, we pay the bill, thank you very much, and that's pretty much the end of it. And formulas notwithstanding, I would think that as paying customers, we would have more of a say in how the budget is run. Well, I think maybe at some point in time, the finance committee should bring in the two VOC representatives, Dr. Kelly and uh, John Montignic, to, to have this discussion with them because they are our, 
They are Dartmouth's votes on that on that board. How are they appointed? Mike Shea. Is it Mike, Mike Shea? Shea? All right. So okay. So now it's it's Doc Kelly and Mike Shea. No. No. Just Dr. Kelly has ste stepped out. Oh, he stepped out. So it's yeah. Mike Shea and John Montigny. Mike Shea and John Montigny. Okay. Yes, so. uh, they are appointed by the um, <laughs> town moderator, chairman of the school committee, chairman of the select board. Uh, we have always, our board has always made it a, an entire board vote, as is, I believe, the school department has done the same. So that way everybody's involved and it just doesn't become, because at one point in time we had an issue where one of the three people who could vote couldn't vote because he worked for Vogue. <laughs> so then it became just a, a, I believe, a two person. Mr. Chair, that one of those positions is up for reappointment. So we're going to look into that and we may have a discussion about who we want to serve in that role. That's terrible. The thing that um, the last presentation we had, um, the absurd is that uh, we pay about $14,000 a student and sitting to Bedford pays about $2,800. Um, and we're not going to change that formula. And I think what I think we can do is the, the other stock difference is in the cost of administration and the amount of people and staff they have. And, and um, I think that even if we consider with our, our representatives and the ones from Fairhaven, if we could maybe in some kind of a joint memorandum back to them. The only the administration cost something they have in control at the school level, whereas the formula is a state level. We're not going to get to that. Right. I think that we ought to continue to put pressure on them to reduce their administrative costs, reduce the budget. Maybe we, it would end up falling, uh, falling down to where maybe our increase would slow down because it's not going to get. It's going to get worse. And we talked about that at length in their presentation. I think pressure on them from our town as well as Fairhaven to try to get a handle. They know it's high. And they need to work on it to come down. And if they don't, it's going to get out of control. And I think that's where we can apply some pressure. Well, then I make a suggestion that um, when the Finance Committee has a uh, new chairperson, that that chairperson contact the chairperson of the finance, uh, Fairhaven's Finance Committee and start the discussion. Because that's where it's going to come from. <coughs> and if you need to, um, if you need to get um, our board support along with Fairhaven Select Board, just let me know and I'll contact um, the Fairhaven Select Board and let's see where we can go from there. Same thing with uh, the schools. You know, if, if we need to, if we have to gang up on, you know, I mean, we have to, we have to do what we have to do to, to, you know, to help our budget, so. Question. When a student wants to go to Boke, do, we, do you get any feedback as to why? We actually took, um, I had the eighth graders take a survey last year, an exit survey. The middle school did that. And the, obviously the majority of students leaving and not going to our high school, we're going to Vogue. Um, and the reason was just programs that we don't offer. That's all it is. You know, what, we've, what we're doing at our high school uh, developed this year, moving into next year, is We've articulated uh, more pathways that we're hoping grab the interest of some of those kids, such as the computer science pathway, the robotics engineering pathway. We're not going to offer plumbing, you know, that kind of thing. But if we can get more into the technology pieces that maybe folks are leaving for, we might end up keeping a few more students. But that's what they put on their survey. It's really just for a different program. I understand the significant majority of their students all go to college. Sure. sure. They're not going into no. auto repair it's, or electrician no, it's changed or over the years. plumber. <laughs> There's right. certainly, I think, some concerns by other communities not in the agreement about um, that students who would actually benefit from the sorts of things that we think about with respect to vocational education are being squeezed out. I agree. So there's not enough, as many seats for plumbers or HVAC. Um, people who maybe aren't going into college and might go into a trade, they are being squeezed out of, of VOC. Um, and what you have, and I've seen parents post this, I've heard them say it, it's a leg up on college. Right, which is not, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not the mission of right. vocational schools. And so when I was chair, I was contacted by some people who are concerned about, uh, we might call it mission creep at the Vogue School, um, and concerned that, that, that some of these things that we think about as vocational education, those kids are being squeezed out of Vogue, and might the communities 
um, be interested in, in, in having that conversation. And I think it is a conversation worth having because it's not fair for kids who, who really truly want to go into a trade and cannot get into Vogue and have access to that sort of, of, of educational opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because not only are we not going to go into it, we're mm -hmm. prohibited by law from going That's into right. those sorts of things, right? We're not allowed to sort of compete. So when they can't get into Vogue, they don't have other options. Um, and so I think that's a it's a it's a legitimate question that the communities as part of that agreement need I to agree. engage in. The question that issue of, of how they define their scope and the programs they offer would be decided by their school committee. I'd have to research the law. I would think it would. I would think it would. So that's something we that's we have control over in a sense through our school committee representatives. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, Mr. Chair. I think it would be uh, well worth our while to bring Dartmouth representatives uh, Montigny and Mr. Shea in uh, to have a discussion whether it's the select board, all three boards, the finance committee, and you know pick their brains and, and see what direction you know they're they're going in down the road and what what the future is for them and and express our concerns to them as a town. Um, I, th I think that would. Mm -hmm. I think it would go a long ways. We have this. Re we have representation for the town of Dartmouth, and I think maybe we should reach out to them. Yeah. I mean, I think what I think one of the things that um, this board and every board does is when they make appointments to different committees, they don't bring those people back to, to talk to them to find out what's going on. Agreed. And I think that's what we need to start doing. We need to bring our VOC representatives here. To discuss with them we also need to bring our representatives and our state senator here to discuss with them i can't remember the last time the state senator was in this was in this hall to for a discussion about dartmouth stuff same thing i, I know uh, representative uh, markey's been here but it's been a while you know we need to take a look at him we also need to uh, well we have our we have our bristol county rep here so you know, we don't need to bring him in because he's here. <laughs> um, so, but but we need to. That's something that this board needs to needs to do, and I think we're going to start doing it. Mm -hmm. We're going to start bringing these people in and start talking to them and saying, "Look, this is this is some of the concerns." One of the uh, one of the ideas that I had a couple years ago was to do a regional meeting. Uh, that and through everything uh, over the years, it just got kind of like to, to the wayside. I think it's time to bring that back. I think I, I think one of the things I want to work on this year is to get a regional meeting where <coughs> Dartmouth, Westport, Fall River, Freetown, yeah. this whole area, this whole South Coast meet together and discuss our mutual problems, mutual concerns, and where we can attack because, you know, for, to be honest with you, far too long the South Coast has always gotten the dirty end of the stick from Boston, and it can no longer be that way. Um, I'm not going to say that they have to make up for it. But at least kind of treat us the same as they, as everybody else. So, um, but that's something that I, I think we have to, we have to address. Sean, excuse me. Yes, Mike. You know, the issues that we're having with Volk are not unique just to us. Every town that deals with a vocational school has the same issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Somerset, Swansea, Westport, with with a Diamond, for example. Right. If you're going to have a regional type get together. Maybe the select boards can start a groundswell with the state reps to get something done with the legislation. Because Dartmouth doing it on their own or, or with Fairhaven alone isn't going to get it done, obviously. But if you can get a consensus with some other folks, then maybe that's where you're going to get more pressure on them. I think that's. I, I just, um, if I just want to add that um, I think that the formula is something that should be the last on our list. If we mention and, and cry about the formula, we're going to get the same attitude. Well, you know, we don't have any control, nor they want to face it. I think that we've heard so many different uh, other areas that have such potential for uh, redoing the relationship. Uh, and, and now that the Bristol County, uh, Bristol Aggie is involved, we're talking about a major, <coughs> so a major amount of dollars on a yearly basis going to disappear, <coughs> and we can apply some, some pressure to change it. Okay. <coughs> Beat that one up. Good. Well, just very one quick thing, uh, which has been alluded to uh, for Bristol Aggie, uh, we did confirm uh, that it's unlikely the debt um, service increase will be in 2019. 
Uh, but in 2020 and certainly beyond, we're looking at about 120,000 increase in the uh, Bristol Aggie budget. So it's going to more than uh, triple um, um, uh, when that is uh, factored in. Well, I could find, I could find probably 35,000 times three to to, take, to cut out and pay for that very much quickly. Just take the commissioner's salary. <laughs> okay, capital improvement plan. Mr. Barnes. Uh, I, as noted, uh, capital did meet on um, Friday, and I'd just like to go over their uh, spring recommendations. Um, we'll start out with the page one. Um, as you know, every year we vote a certain amount out of the uh, uh, operating revenues for police cars. Uh, we've continued to do that. Uh, going to page three, um, the, uh, there was 20,000 toward facility sticker software for parks <coughs> as needed as uh, they got a barcoding system uh, that has some issues without certain software. Um, also, uh, CPA, uh, the CPC funded, uh, Community Preservation Committee funded 130,000 for a gazebo. That's a recommendation of theirs. Uh, they still need 20,000 uh, to complete uh, the gazebo renovation. Um, there's 12,000 coming out of the regular budget. We already have those monies. <clears throat> so going to page five, uh, and I'm grateful to this to the school committee. Uh, we voted uh, 200,000 out of tax levy for the school technology and infrastructure. Again, that's consistent with prior policy. Uh, additionally, uh, 185,000 for radio system, and I'm sure the schools would like to talk about that. I'll leave that to them. And 400,000 uh, for Memorial Stadium. That is specifically to address the lighting and provide uh, some money for engineering. Uh, going to page. Uh, Seven, I won't go through every one of them, uh, but uh, basically any item that is funded <coughs> through the enterprise fund but not funded through the general fund uh, was recommended. Um, uh, our enterprise funds, particular sewer and water, uh, <coughs> they are utilities and utilities by their very nature are extremely capital intensive it is extremely important that uh, we take monies to keep them up to date um, uh, these monies come from the enterprise funds so they are funded through the users and not the uh, taxpayers um, some that I'm particularly fond of include uh, I and I monies to address inflow <coughs> and infiltration. Uh, that is part of an ongoing uh, program that has significantly cut back the number uh, amount of water going into our our sewer system, and that that is a. a a very important expenditure. There's a number of expenditures related to the upgrade of the sewer and, and water system, which does include some roads, um, uh, Roger Street, um, uh, some uh, an electric, sur uh, little, Lucy Little will be getting some uh, attention. And there will be a water main upgrade project on Water Hill, Seawood, Prospect Street, Malrose, and Day. Uh, that's a $1.4 million project right there. Okay, that's about it. Well, first of all, it's good news on Lucy Little Road. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, 
Jim, you want to anything on the um, <coughs> cap stuff for the schools? Sure, I, I'd be happy to. Um, so, <laughs> the radio system, the district wide radio system, is something that we've identified that um, was actually originally out in year two of our capital improvement plan here, and we've moved it up um, to address. Basically, right now we have a combination of issues. We have some dead spots, and without getting into a whole lot of security talk in terms of specifics, um, this would provide repeaters in the buildings, uh, a common framework, which we don't have currently for radio systems throughout the buildings, and the ability for um, emergency services to access the radios everywhere in the buildings. Um, so it's an important thing. We definitely need this. And then uh, the Dartmouth Memorial Stadium renovations, um, we're in the process of creating, of having uh, an engineer, landscape architect, take a look at the stadium and create a phasing plan um, for some of the work that could be done. So we're very appreciative of the recommendation here for $400,000, which would actually take it beyond sort of schematic design and take it into actual design of constructing um, some improvements, including the lights um, in the field. So uh, we got some good news on the lights and that LED pricing has been coming down. Uh, there was a pretty significant gap between LED pricing and more traditional lighting, um, and that's that's been narrowing of late. Um, as recently as like months ago, it's dropped. So, uh, so we're hopeful that we can ad address at least part of the project at this point, and then hopefully <coughs> seek funding down the road. Uh, like Shannon, I just want to say thanks to everyone, the select board, finance committee. You know, for we met maybe a couple years ago. And I know some of you guys have served on a committee. We've been talking about this for a really long time. So I'm really, really very pleased that we're actually I'm starting excited. to see some yes. movement on this. And so thanks to everyone who's, you know, who sat in and helped out on this. At least with the lighting. Mm -hmm. it, it's something. It's a start. It's a, We've yeah, been talking about it for a long time. I, I can this tell is you a as a, I know the people who've used the field, but I, I can tell you as a former football official, uh, <laughs> under those lights, it's just horrendous. It was okay. a secret weapon now. It's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be the person in the box that's got to figure out who's down on the yes, desk. Well, we've, we've listened to your calls and every yeah. so often. And just, oh, John's got it wrong. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> you understand why. I have no excuses now, John. <laughs> I know. No excuses after that. Patriots have a snow plow and we have yeah. lights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I do want to mention, um, and, I, and I believe this is something that I, I want to point to the finance committee is when the DPW <coughs> comes to you looking for a plow truck, please browbeat them into making sure that it's a four-wheel drive vehicle. They are. They're all new. Okay. I know they're, new, I know they're starting vehicles. to go that way. All four-wheel. Um, because, I mean, this town is not flat. We don't have, we have hills, and there are far too many trucks that get stuck in the snow uh, when it comes time, whether it's a, a uh, sander going down <coughs> Robin Street and getting stuck and having to be towed out, or a plow going down Robin Street and having to be towed out. Um, I'm sure on Hill Street, it's the same, and High Street, it's the same way, and many other streets in town, uh, they get stuck. So <coughs> I, if they ever mention their plow truck, make sure that it's at least a four wheel drive. I understand the maintenance on the vehicle is higher. But you know something, if it doesn't get these guys stuck, as long as the tires are decent. It, yeah, they've got, the, they've got their own maintenance <laughs> facility now. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're, we're getting there too, so. They're going uh, go to go to your plow class, right, Sean? Yes, <laughs> yes, we will be holding our plow, we will be holding our plow class in August sometime. Uh, where we'll be, one of the subjects will be uh, how to protect your mailbox from getting knocked over. Uh, anybody else? Mike, a question regarding Gatsby. Uh, everybody enjoys that one, but um, <coughs> we're committing four hundred thousand dollars to that this year in the budget. Something like that. Gatsby, four hundred thousand. Uh, yes. Okay. It, do you know if there's been any movement about 
that at the state level or anything like that? I, uh, I, I have not heard anything. I, I mean, the, the conversation does come up quite regularly at the state level, but in terms of legislative <laughs> will to make a change, I've not detected that. Well, the reason I'm asking the question is do we feel collectively is it worth continuing to pour money into this? Even though somewhere down the road it's not going to be anywhere near what we really need, because I don't even know where our unfunded <coughs> liabilities are right now, and are we just, you know, putting a drop into a big, big bucket? It, hel it helps our bond rating. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> no, I agree. Uses money where we borrow. How much though? And how much does it have the effect? And I guess the question we don't is, have is a that AAA bond rating would be quite a bit. Well, I don't know if it's going to take our bond rating down. That's all right. Um, again, that's not an answer that I have. It's a question. My point is, is as the budget gets tighter, tighter, tighter. That four hundred thousand dollars that we're putting into the bank, um, it could be sitting there for no real good reason, not making any any money for us. And I think in that account now we must have a considerable amount of money in there because we've been doing this since I've been on about one point eight million. Okay, it's, it's a lot of money sitting, and I know we can use it if we need to for like type expenses on our budget. But should we keep <coughs> pouring more money into this? Because we keep doing this next look. The state's probably not going to act on it. My argument would be that the state has, and the GASP has changed its formulation. So even if our liability, uh, the actual uh, numbers did not change, the overall uh, liability will continue to go up due to those changes made by the state and the federal. Uh, we are uh, using a hedge strategy. We're not fully funding it, but at the same time, we're trying to prevent the issue from getting worse. Uh, the bond rating agency, this is a very important issue for them, it is probably one of the dominant things that they're asking uh, communities. Uh, currently, um, it is a voluntary standard. However, there has been a lot of discussion about it one day being mandatory. Uh, so my feeling is, uh, uh, well, 400 may seem like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. It is a drop in the bucket to the overall liability. Uh, by hedging, we are, are showing uh, something important to the bond rating agencies, and I think that's played a very large role in our, our strong bond rating. Again, uh, because of changes in methodology, unfortunately, <coughs> that number will continue to go up. I, I, I just thought I'd bring it up. I mean, Hey, Could in the worst, I, uh, in the worst um, case scenario, we end up with a, a large chunk of money to spend on capital needs, of which we have plenty. And it's not <laughs> like we're not going to be able to use that money if it turned well, out. Well, we're, we we're going to need it, but if we didn't, right, we would uh, have it to savings account. Let me just correct there. We would have to use it toward health care, but obviously you could, if you use that toward health care, you'd have other monies available. Um, one thing, in going through the capital request, I actually did miss one because it doesn't have a number associated with it, uh, which is the town hall roof. Now, I've already explained this to the finance committee. Oh, um, I have not. Um, <laughs> I have not um, uh, given the same explanation to the select board, although I did write them uh, an email to keep them informed when it did occur. But during the, four, the first Northeasterner, uh, the roof sustained damage. Uh, there's a chimney that where the wind got underneath and basically blew up part of the roof like a, a balloon. Uh, that resulted in uh, water incursion. It went into the select board's uh, sitting area uh, and actually got down to the town clerk. Um, uh, we were able to uh, contain that water and, and did a very quick uh, uh, cleanup uh, using a professional firm. However, the roof is uh, uh, compromised. Um, we actually have to have someone now go up there after every rainstorm and attempt to mop up 
water around a drainage area that cannot be uh, repaired. Um, I should note, it's important to note, uh, I was originally told this roof was 86. More recently, um, it seems like it's 1990, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 94. Um, that's beyond the 20 year lifespan of a roof. Um, so David did have it slated to be funded in the fall. Um, however, with the damage sustained, uh, we need to take more immediate action. Uh, so what I've done is I've hired an uh, a engineering firm to come in and do a professional um, review. That engineering firm was actually strongly recommended by the schools who have had extensive experience replacing their roof. I should state that when they did the last roof job, uh, it used to be a tar and gravel roof. Um, they did not take the tar and gravel off. They put a rubber membrane on top. Um, I don't pretend to be a roof expert, but for those who I've spoken to, the preferred course of action is to uh, go down to the base. Um, from there, we would put on uh, a much higher degree of insulation and a new roof. Um, um, I'm not sure if we put it at a slight angle to allow uh, better water runoff, uh, but right now this is an uncertainty factor as to the cost. I, actually, the engineering company, I believe, may be coming tomorrow to start their testing. They were waiting for the weather to warm up. I guess there's some tests they do that keeps. <coughs> Uh, it's a geothermal picture of the roof. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, it's hard to tell what that number will be. However, uh, the schools, based on their extensive experience, did use the number 600,000. So I can't tell you whether that's in the ballpark or not. Uh, now, we have... Um, uh, if it is that number, uh, I will be asking the Finance Committee uh, for a contribution from the uh, Reserve Fund, uh, because I will not have that money within uh, the um, uh, uh, free cash surplus revenue. Keep in mind, um, it all becomes surplus revenue if not used anyway, so what we're in effect doing is using it now and not later. Um, but by everyone I've spoken to, this is not something we can wait till the, the fall on. Um, I'm not trying to get anyone's hopes up, but one of our um, possible options that's um, presented by this roof repair is the school roof will be done this summer. So we're hoping that perhaps um, if, if the timing is, is right, we might be able to uh, take advantage of the fact that you have a company all set up next door and, and perhaps we could get a better bid than we otherwise could. That there's nothing definitive there, but it, it is uh, something that we're hoping we can take advantage of. I know that um, uh, it was mentioned during uh, uh, the capital hearing, the school saved 20% by doing, uh, I guess, the Cushman roof along with the DeMello roof. So uh, we're hoping to take advantage of that. Well, I know, at the, I know when we were looking to renovating this building into the town hall, the, uh, one of the things that we looked at it was the roof, was either keeping it in the current, I guess the uh, keeping it flat with with pitched, or actually putting on a uh, hip <laughs> roof on it. And one of the things that uh, was determined is that the structure up above wouldn't hold the weight of a hip roof, and that uh, the structure does lend itself to a flat roof 
uh, better than it does uh, putting rafters on and putting even a slight pitch roof. So um, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, that somebody just decided to put a second roof on top of the old roof. Uh, and it just goes against, I mean, what I'm used to in, in dealing with roofing and, and whatnot. So uh, <laughs> then again, sometimes I'm not surprised. So hopefully uh, we can piggyback um, if the... Uh, the contractor that does the uh, middle school roof is the actual uh, bid winner. Um, it would probably be a good good advantage, at least for us, uh, to get it done. So, <coughs> Mr. Tim, Mr. Um, risk of uh, just trying not to belabor the Gatsby issue, but I'd like to make, with the finance committee here, I might make a suggestion that um, if there's a number that would make sense that's lower than we're spending now, that would still honor the, our, our rating. I would like to consider if there, if there is a number that's lower, but also um, we're just paying our bill and, uh, and certainly we, we have an obligation to our, all our past and present uh, workers, but um, we need to, I, I think maybe even it's an annual thing where we write to our, whoever the powers to be in the State House that, that we need to change the rules for future employees. We're not going to change the rules for people who have earned what they've earned already. And I think we ought to just not just sit back and maybe try to be a little more proactive on an annual basis, whatever the time's right, to a letter to them stating what our case is. At the bare minimum, to review some of the, uh, something that can pass, it would make sense as opposed to some wholesale changes which will never happen because there's too much, uh, too much lobbying at the state house level for massive changes. But just the way they treat part-time workers, the way that they treat um, our present employees um, and, and also uh, the world's have changed too much. We can't possibly pay our future employees the same way we paid in benefits because it just doesn't work that way anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I think just something that would make maybe us feel a little bit better uh, to know that we're, they, we're not just paying our bill and, um, and not trying to get something out of it. Okay. Good suggestion. Okay, any, anything else on the cap? Okay. Last, the financial policies <coughs> We're all Greg? Okay, so the financial policies, as you see, are quite similar to the ones uh, we voted back in November 2016. Um, uh, so they, there shouldn't be any uh, surprise on the first 18 policies. Um, the Finance Committee has been talking about setting a, a, a goal for the amount in the reserve fund. However, they have not had the chance to vote that, so I did not include that in the um, proposed update policy. But again, everything else here you've already seen. Um, uh, so it's more just for your info. The addendum <coughs> policy voted November 16th once again. Uh, you did vote that back in November 16. Um, that um, was something uh, uh, that our auditors suggested we incorporate. It uh, gets into great detail about what funds should be spent uh, in what order. Um, finally, um, there is, uh, and this was discussed among the select board in the FinCom, uh, the um, FinCom did vote uh, a reserve fund policy back in October. Um, there seems to be some disagreement on the policy, but uh, when we voted it back in October, uh, part of what was discussed was bringing it up during this meeting. So I am bringing uh, it up during this meeting. Uh, um, but again, there has been an extensive debate between the two boards on the, on the policy. John. John. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Thank you. Uh, can I say this? It would be nice and I don't know if you saw this, I'm assuming since it was approved by the Finance Committee, the Board of Selectmen also seen, have seen it. But this is the first time we're seeing it. And though we don't control reserve funds type of deal, 
it would be nice if we were in the loop when policies for the town are going to be changed or discussed, just so that through our superintendent, <coughs> business manager, assistant superintendent, we can make okay. our feelings known and they can convey them to uh, both other boards type of deal. I mean, we're seeing this literally for the first time tonight. I mean, we do come to the finance committee sometimes for reserve fund transfers. Yet this is the first time we've seen it. It should okay, have been, well, when I it did. was passed, it should have been sent along to the school committee um, so that we could see it. <coughs> we have, this is the first time the, the members of the board have seen this. But they don't give money out anymore, it, so it doesn't matter. It was passed right. out of It would have been nice for us to know they don't <laughs> give money out anymore. <laughs> It, it was passed out. I'm not sure. Um, I, I I would have to to. Um, I mean, we got it. Let me let me back. We probably got it over the weekend. To be honest with you, with our packets. No, no. What I'm saying is, way back when it was disseminated. Uh, however, uh, somehow you did not get it. No, we did not. The rest is all the same. Well, I mean, as far as as far as what we have right now, they're really. I mean, this is their policy so I mean, got it. and um, right no I'm just saying as far as any kind of vote to re to affirm or anything we don't need to do any voting on the reaffirm or uh, the financial <coughs> policies because that was done uh, a year and a half ago yeah so um, I know our board is got some concerns regarding the, this policy uh, and it's been expressed and, and discussed in um, Mr. Gracie, you want to, uh, I think uh, she was the chair at the time when we were discussing this. You want to reiterate it? You want to dig this up again, huh? Yes. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had asked for a reserve fund uh, transfer to help cover the cost for the search for the town administrator. Oh. And it fits all the requirements provided by the rules and regulations. Uh, what they, what they have added, and, and I will say that when I was on the Finance Committee, I agreed with 98% of what their policy is. That's enough. And it's not, yeah, for you guys it was. Yeah. Uh, that's why you're not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, you were changing your mind. Uh, the difference is that if you have other money you have access to, you have to use that up first. And again, I agree with that. If you're a department that has uh, uh, Box is a good example. If you have a, a, a supplies account, you have a maintenance account, you have a repairs <coughs> account, and one of those runs short, the policy that I used to adhere to was that if you have money in one of those other accounts, you can transfer it within your own master account without anybody's permission, basically. Or you just, or Greg can do it, but you don't have to get a vote on it or anything. Uh, and I agree to that. The problem is the only account that we have available is, is a salary account. So. By them saying, no, we're not going to give you any extra money until you use up your money, we have to tap into the salary account that uh, we still have those employees. They, they, they expect to be paid. You can't pay operating expenses out of salary. <laughs> mm -hmm. You should have been with us. With <laughs> but not necessarily. <clears throat> no, first of all, you have an expense budget for the select, for the select board or the town administrator's office? Your expense budget? There is an expense budget. Okay, $22,000? Something like, somewhere in that area. Okay, and the search cost was about twelve thousand. Well, it was ninety five hundred plus under unknowns. In the ballpark. But, but we were running a deficit at the time because I asked Greg where we could take it from, and we were running in the red because there but was we, no but apparent place right. to pay. But when for. we discussed this, it was maybe halfway through the fiscal year, somewhere around there. So there's a lot of room for the for the rest of the fiscal year to things things to play out. Okay. The other thing was is that when we talked about this, we looked at, um, I mean, part of my rationale was, you're going to have a vacancy for a while, okay? You may not use all of your salary like, okay? Now, to this point, since Mr. Cressman's left and you've paid the money for the search, where do you stand in your salary line? Well, we still have some left, but we actually, we hope to have the person hired before the end of the fiscal year. Understood, but you don't know. And that's, and that's the well, whole that's point. Right. Yeah. There were a lot of unknowns. Did you really need that money? And when this all plays out, I don't know, okay? My guess is is that you're going to wind up even or probably ahead of the game, right? which I think makes a case for what the policy is that we have. 
because there are unknowns on both ends, but sometimes the unknown works to the point where you wind up ahead of the game. And I think, I can't remember who mentioned it when we had our meeting the last time, was, you know, you fall short money at home, do you run to the bank? And the answer is no. What you do is you try to, you know, you manage. And we have professional managers in this town who run departments, and that's their job is to manage. And you see how it plays out. No one was not going to get paid. We know that. Okay, and the thing about the salary lines, I get it, and people aren't comfortable, because this is something new. People aren't comfortable with taking money out of a salary line to pay an expense, right? But that's the case that we're doing with this. But no one was not going to get paid, was not going to ever get paid. I mean, that, that was, yeah. yeah. That, that sounds a lot like your checks in the mail, but. No, not even close. <laughs> you know what, there's, a, there's always a possibility, but what's the actual probability of it happening? And there are two entirely different things. It has to it, because once. if we, but it won't. I, I, with great assurance, I can tell you that it's won't. Because if that were the case, we'd never do anything. If we wait on the possibility of something, you weigh, you weigh against the probabilities of it happening. We have a reserve fund and a stabilization fund with more than sufficient funds to make up the $12,000. We're talking about next to nothing here. Okay? Right, but we would never take it out of the stab fund. Whatever the case, someone, no one was, the argument that was made was that we were concerned that someone wouldn't get paid. That was that was seemed to be well. We also didn't know if what the other extra costs were going to be. Okay, but the point, but the, the the standing line was well. We don't know if someone's not going to get paid. Well, guess what? They're going to get paid, and and when it's all said and done, by the time you bring a new person on, you're probably going to have a turn back this year from your salary line. Let alone borrowing the, getting the twelve thousand. You may well, you may well, but we don't know that, and we'll know that as we get closer to the end of the year. Then, if that at that point you guys are short, you haven't used and you've used all your money in your expense fund. You guys are going to come up short. Then you. We revisit. It's pretty straightforward. And the reason that this was brought forward, and I, and I think Dave and Doug can uh, test this, is that we had other situations similar to this where we were, you know, asked to make transfers for something that we really didn't probably need to. So, and that was the whole point. And the reason I'm speaking is I spoke the loudest and longest about it for the last three years, and you guys all know that. And right. it's something that I felt strongly about because I firmly believe that the managers that you have in this town should manage your department and, and at times they have to make adjustments and, and figure things out. Give them that opportunity. It's their department. Let them try to figure it out. And if they need it, we do it. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I, I, I mostly agree, except... As How I much? 98 percent? Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 89 now. Uh, with, the, with, the, with the example I gave with the parks department, the money that's put aside is not already planned. It's there for just in case. Salary account is not money that's put there just in case. It's put there because you know you're going to spend it. No, you don't. Well, of course you do. You calculate you what don't. people make and what the raises are going to be for the but, year. And but in, the case, in this case, vacancy. this year, you knew you were going to have a vacancy where someone wasn't going to be getting paid. Well, we didn't know we were going to have a vacancy until When we, we told made us. the budget, we didn't know we no, had you didn't. Right. No, vacancy. I agree, but when you that's asked right. for the money, right. you were going to have a time where you weren't going to have someone getting paid. And you didn't know how that was going to play out, and neither did we. Right. No, we, we did. But, but, but we knew we had expenses, and we knew we were planning on hiring somebody before the end of the fiscal year. Correct. So it's still salary money that was going to be used. Yeah, that's okay. Well, that's, it's also also the point that, <laughs> if my remembrance is correctly, over the last three years, you folks have spent zero out of any reserve fund. No, we have. Uh, that was a question I asked. We've had line transfers. Line transfers, and we've also Part of it, so. well, we've approved them. Yeah, so a couple of things. One is that. This is called a policy, but it really is policy and practices, but it's more practices and policy. So what this was intended to do, I think, is to articulate the, the criteria that we have been using when looking at transfers that come to us. So, so that departments know what we're thinking when they come to us for a transfer and they can expect our, our decision-making process. So it's not a policy that, that we want to sort of stand and nothing in here is ironclad. It's just sort of suggest the things that we're going to consider. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to point out is that a lot of this comes from our thinking that if there's, a, if there's something that we need to spend money on, the best way to spend money on it is from money appropriated by town meeting for that purpose, right? If you don't have money there, then the second best thing is to get appropriated money for, that was for some other purpose that then can be used for this other purpose, which is to say a line transfer between budget accounts. Um, then if, if that's not possible, then, a reserve, then pulling from the reserve fund is our final option. So that, was, that was kind of the, 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 the decision-making rule that we have come to agree to. So a lot of the, the, 
the, the delaying as well to wait towards the end of the budget year is partly designed to get us to the line transfers because that's when we'll know what monies are available in other budget lines in other departments or, co or related departments where we can cover that without the reserve fund. If we do it you know, middle or early part of the year, it's got to come from the reserve fund and then we don't honor that, that ability to use the or already appropriated monies from a line transfer. So that's a little bit of why that We'd rather back end the decision making um, and see what we have to transfer instead of doing reserve. My sense is, uh, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Gracie, uh, <coughs> uh, they agree with the policy 100%. However, in their mind, when it comes to salaries, uh, there's a, that's not the same. So therefore, it should be treated differently. That's Simple as that. That's safe to say. The FinCom, the FinCom has, has decided that uh, we need, that, that there was a higher need to be consistent that all the departments knew that if you had money, you're not going to get it until you actually need it. So the, the really, is there flexibility because it's a salary account and we need to be different because it's salary? It's a debatable question. Uh, and the, it, the proof here is that may, there might be money left over because of ex extraordinary circumstance of maybe, but we don't know that either. But in the interest of being consistent, I think that's what FinCom's unanimous opinion was that uh, the money is going to be there. We're not going to not pay people salary. On the other hand, there is a need to let the message out that consistency is more important than the <coughs> fact that this may be one particular difference that salary is, should be treated differently than others. And I think that's the rationale. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I understand that, there's a, that we're all entitled to an opinion about how you feel about that issue versus the other. Well, as long as there's some flexibility. And we just wanted clarity for all the departments to understand it. Um, and just to the point of why school department didn't receive it, I can't answer that because we did give the direction to have make sure all departments were to receive it. Right. So. Yeah. We, we did pass it out during department head meetings and we put it on the website. So. We actually had quite a bit of debate on when we should send it out. Right. <laughs> so more time on that than we did on the document. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> Go for the cracks. Well, needless to, needless to say, if any time something that needs to be shared, then yeah. it's got to be shared, period, no matter what, no matter what it is, plain and simple. We've got to start talking to each other instead of talking at each other. So from now on, whatever goes for one goes for all. Can I move to a different uh, item in the financial policies if we're done with the... Reserve fund? Yeah, please. Uh, <coughs> please. <laughs> item 10. Never done item 10 deals with the uh, full day kindergarten stamp fund, which is now defunct because we've gone through the levels of agreement. Should, do we need a motion to remove that item? It's basically a dead letter. Well, I did have for fiscal 2018, the agreement will be allowed to expire, no additional, or you just want to totally. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's, it's no it no longer carries any uh, action in it because we've already well, made. We do keep in mind we do have money still within that fund. So. Right, but does it direct anything about the use of it? I don't know. It's just about giving and donating to it, isn't it? But not? we could eliminate Well, just say it allowed to expire and no additional monies will be added. Yeah. But since, as long as there's still a, a, an amount, still in that amount, in, in that fund, yes. until that's depleted, then once it's depleted, then we can remove this from the policies. Okay. But it doesn't say that anything's going to be added to this anyway. So, right. so it's as long as there's a balance, it's right. there. Okay. What is the current balance? What is the balance? Um, Millions. I think it's like 180 maybe. No, it's like 350. Oh, okay. Enough to cover the deficit. Oh, no, no, no. I could use that. You're not going to see that. Just, you know, ballparking here. Give or take. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Wasn't there going to be some discussion of the search? That's a way to All right, uh, Mr. Basin, you want to give us an update on the... Uh, you want to jump ahead and do that? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. While we're all here, because it affects everybody. All right. Um, I'll go back and repeat as much as I can remember, because I don't know what you've heard what you haven't heard. Uh, we had 49 candidates apply to MRI. Uh, they quickly... They, that wasn't quickly, but they went through the, the uh, submitted documents and whittled that down to roughly half. They then chose a portion to go out and do uh, phone interviews with, um, and 
they cut that, they, through their process, they cut it down even farther to something around, around 15 or so, 15, 18, something in that range. Um, they then narrowed it down to in anticipation of uh, our in-house uh, uh, screening committee to get, and, and I had been in contact with them, and I told them, that, look, I don't want people that don't, can't do the job or not close to being qualified of it, but we want, you know, real people to actually look at and, and make decisions on. And I suggest that number be somewhere about eight to 10. And they actually gave us nine. Since the nine came out, um, one person has dropped out, they took a job elsewhere. So we still have eight. Um, we're starting, actually, it's funny you bring it up because we're starting interviews tomorrow. We're interviewing two, two candidates tomorrow. Wednesday, we're interviewing three candidates. And the Wednesday after that, we're interviewing three candidates. So by the next time the select board meets, I would expect that we'll have uh, uh, a decision. We're trying to find the top three to bring before the full select board to have, to, uh, to interview and hire. Uh, I've asked them. To, I've asked my committee to have a couple extra in reserve in case somebody else gets a job and drops out. So that we'll always have we'll always have three available so that we you know have reasonable choice. So so I expect this to be over within a couple of weeks. Or at least before the select board within a couple of weeks. Okay. That's where we're at. Anybody have John? Anybody from the committee? Good. Doug? Mm -hmm. No. Good Anybody from our board? All right. So um, we need to adjourn. adjourn. I'm going to make yep. a motion. But before to adjourn. we do that, before we do that, um, I was figuring we, uh, since it's been 364 days since we last met, uh, <laughs> we're not going to uh, make it 364 again. I like to make it at least 180, so I think we should meet sometime in October, uh, maybe the first meeting in October before town meeting, um, and uh, so let's do this again. I think it's actually on the town meeting schedule. I just, for some reason, I don't think we had it last year. Uh, no, but I... There is one there. We should do it. Yep. So just to, just to make sure. Um, so, um, and I think at some point in time, um, maybe the school committee and the select board can uh, get together uh, maybe sometime after town meeting to talk to our VOC representatives um, about the VOC's situation. And of course the finance committee is more than welcome to uh, sit in on the meeting, but at least just to, as a viewers, but since we need to discuss this. With that, yeah, Mr. Noons. Yeah. I will make a motion to adjourn. I second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.